My golden child sister booked her wedding date the same day as my sibling's graduation. I, 23 meters, am one of seven kids. There's Lydia, 31F, Josh, 28 meters, Leo, 25 meters, me, then Aaron, 21F, Nadia, 18F, and the surprise child Lexi, 4F. With that many siblings, it's easy to get lost in the crowd. Some of us have our positions, so to speak. Lydia's the oldest, Lexi's the baby, I have a kid, yes, that's my descriptor. Op, gave us a grandchild. Aaron is the golden child. She was the last planned child, the one supposed to tie up our family. She was born premature so I understand that my parents coddled her to an extent, but it's more than that now. Aaron's getting married and recently told us that she's brought the date forward due to a cancellation. No big deal, it just means they're getting married sooner. But the new date lands on the date of Nadia's HS graduation. Aaron was sympathetic, but said she's already committed to the date, they've printed the invitations. My parents normally go overboard on our HS grads, but they said that they just have to miss Nadia's. We were all sympathetic, but it wasn't intentional. Or so I thought. But Nadia later told me and Leo that she was there when Aaron got the call about the cancellation and told Aaron that she was graduating that day, but Aaron just laughed and accepted the date anyway. This, as much as I hate to admit it, sounds like a very Aaron thing to do. She booked her engagement part for the night of Nadia's 18th birthday, luckily, she wasn't celebrating until the weekend. She announced her engagement at my oldest sister's wedding anniversary. Everything is about her. I confronted Aaron about this, and she said that Nadia's HS graduation didn't matter. She wanted to get married to the love of her life sooner, and our family had been to plenty of HS graduations at this point, anyway. She said something like, we still have Lexi. But here's what gets me the most, Nadia's been looking forward to this for so long. She's watched all of us graduate and have these huge celebrations thrown by our parents. I asked Nadia what she wanted, and she said she wanted to have her day. So, I told my family that me and Nadia won't be attending the wedding. Leo has also dropped out. Everyone's angry. Aaron's furious, and I didn't make it better by telling her that I could watch our other siblings get married, since it's all the same in her eyes. Mom's trying to convince me to come to the wedding because graduation isn't as important but I feel like if I don't do this then it sets a precedent in Nadia's life that she's always going to mean less than Aaron. I've had messages calling me an asshole, an idiot, etc. They're telling me to step up and be a good brother, but that's what I'm doing. My son is supposed to be ring bearer but with how my family is reacting, I'm considering pulling him out of the wedding, too. My dad's told Nadia he'll take her to dinner after the wedding. Nadia's currently staying with me because mom won't stop cornering her. Ida? Edit. Nadia's graduation is next Friday and Aaron was supposed to get married a month later. I'm not sure on the details. I think she wanted to get married in June, but none of the venues she liked had any slots until July. I'm honestly not sure, and honestly I don't care to know because, right now, it doesn't change the fact that she's chosen to get married on Nadia's graduation date. She committed to the date late last year. She's had to sacrifice some aspects of the wedding for this new date and had to fork out more money to make it work. She and fiancé have been together since they were 16, so I don't know why she's in a rush to get married all of a sudden when before she was just happy to be with him, or so she used to gush whenever any of us spoke about our own significant others. I'm not close to the guy myself, but he seems pretty chill, the complete opposite of her. I don't think she's pregnant, but again I can't be sure. She's always been pretty determined that she won't have any children until she's at least 25 but I understand things change and whatnot. I don't think she'd choose to have a child right now unless she's decided she likes the attention my son gets from our parents or something. My sister just want to be the center of attention, here are some examples. I proposed to my partner two months after Aaron got engaged. This proposal was something I'd been planning for months, something my family had been made aware of for months, and fell on a day that's significant to me and my partner. Aaron was angry because I should have waited until this year so she'd be married beforehand. Our brother Josh was cheated on a few years back. It really broke his heart and his confidence was in tatters for a while afterwards. Aaron asked him if he could give her a necklace he'd bought for his girlfriend because it's not like he needed it, a few days after the incident took place. When he yelled at her, she cried to our parents about how she was trying to help him. She broke her leg the morning of Josh's college graduation. It was an accident, but all of us agreed that it was pretty on brand for her. Update 1. It's two days after D-Day and I finally come bearing an update. I've had to condense it quite a bit because a lot has happened. Before I start, Nadia wanted me to thank everyone who congratulated her on her graduation. She was overwhelmed by the support you all gave her, especially after she faced such opposition from our family. So, let's start. 
Last Friday, Leo and I went to speak to our parents and Aaron. I wanted to tell them that I'd be pulling my son from the wedding. Our older siblings ended up turning up as well, so it was us four standing up for Nadia. Leo had spoken to them the night before, and helped them see things more clearly from Nadia's eyes. Apparently, it didn't sink in with them that Aaron chose the date intentionally. There was a lot of yelling. Aaron accused me of trying to sabotage her wedding, our parents tried to convince me to let them take my son to the wedding, but I stood my ground. I felt a lot stronger with my older siblings with me. There's only two years between me and Aaron after all, I'm not much of an older brother. Luckily, Lydia was there. Her words carry more weight as the eldest and she didn't give Aaron or my parents room to argue as she told them that Aaron chose the date intentionally, admitted as much in front of me and Leo, and that this was normal behavior for her. Lydia told them that if they continued to favor Aaron so blatantly, the rest of us would go no contact, and Lexi would likely follow in the future. Our dad started yelling. Not at us, but at Aaron, surprisingly. I've never seen him so angry before, and to see it directed at Aaron was. Shocking. Our mom asked us to leave. We didn't hear from anyone on that side until Monday when Aaron's fiancé George asked to meet us at our parents. He apologized to Nadia. He didn't know that the wedding and graduation overlapped, nor did he know that it was something Aaron did on purpose. Our dad was the one to tell him. What followed was a long talk between us, during which we all aired our grievances. I told our parents that we all felt that they valued Aaron more. That none of us mattered to them compared to her. Her artwork always went up on the fridge, ours always went in the drawer. I told them that, as a parent, I could never imagine treating my child like that. Aaron tried to argue. She tried to tell us that we were trying to turn her into a bad guy, trying to turn our parents against her, trying to sabotage her wedding. Our mom told her to be quiet, that it was our time to talk. George stepped in to tell us that he didn't expect us to attend the wedding, but we were welcome to attend the reception. He went so far as to say that he wished he could have cancelled the wedding altogether, but it had only cost him more money that he'd spent by bringing it forward. Mom's willingness to hear us out lasted less than 24 hours. By Tuesday, she was begging us to reconsider. Apparently our feelings meant nothing in the face of Aaron's dire stress and the fact that people would be questioning our absence on the big day. I haven't spoken to my mom since, but I did ask my dad to bring my sum of Nadia's things because she is going to be staying with me full time. We have officially gone no contact with our mother. Dad took Nadia out for an early graduation celebration on Wednesday. They had a daddy-daughter date that I think she really needed. He apologized for a lot of things and told her he wanted to do the same with the rest of us. But Wednesday was about her. I'm happy she got that one-on-one -on -one time with him. She was happy coming home to me. In our sibling group chat, she said that she really thinks dad is going to try to mend bridges with us, even if mom won't. Dad also turned up early yesterday morning, I'm talking. 6.30 a.m., to give Nadia flowers. He told her that he was proud of her. George even called while he was getting ready for his big day to congratulate Nadia, which I really appreciated. We didn't hear from mom or Aaron. Our paternal grandma ended up coming to the graduation with us. It was a great day. Like, a really great day. We didn't think about the wedding, didn't think about Aaron. We just had fun together. My son got to wear his aunt's cap and gown and nearly drowned in the fabric. Our grandma tried on the cap, too. We took photos and sent them to our dad, who posted them in a Facebook post he wrote to congratulate both Aaron on her wedding and Nadia on her graduation and we laughed about how it must have pissed off our newly wedded sister. We went out for dinner and we, as siblings, gifted Nadia money for a week away with her best friend, which somebody suggested in a comment on the initial post. I texted George my congratulations. Despite everything, I do hope he and Aaron are happy together. While she might not love us, I don't doubt that Aaron loves him. Yes, she wants her spotlight and her moment, but I don't think she's marrying him just for that. Bringing the wedding forward? Sure, that's a hugely malicious tactic to bring herself more attention. Marrying him for the sake of having a wedding? She isn't that type of narcissist. As of right now, I plan on staying no contact with my mom unless she makes some big changes. This is a sentiment shared not only by the majority of my siblings, but is also encouraged by our dad and grandma. She's tried reaching out to me and my partner, mostly berating us for not attending the wedding and accusing us of planning to keep her grandchild away from her. At the moment, our summer looks busy. We're planning on filling it with as many family outings as possible before Nadia leaves for college. We've also got Josh's 29th birthday to plan. Our dad's even joining in. This might cause a bigger rift between him and mom, but for now, at least, it looks like we're his priority. Lydia's threat really did something to him. Thanks everyone who left comments on the original post. 
I know they really cheered Nadia up when she was worrying about whether or not she was doing the right thing by choosing herself. Part of me wishes we could have taken this stand earlier, but it took us a while to find our voices. Looking into the future, I do see two empty spaces at my own wedding, but I also see five siblings cheering my on. I'm happy with that. Update 2. It's been about five months since I've last posted, and I've had some requests for an update, so I figured I'd sit down and write one up. Bear in mind, a lot can happen in five months, and that's definitely true for this. Let me start off with July. Aaron and George went on their honeymoon, and their absence sent our mom into a frenzy. She wasn't used to having no one around, someone was always visiting. Mostly Aaron, but the rest of us would visit out of obligation and to see Nadia and Lexi. With Aaron on her honeymoon and the rest of us NC, mom had no visitors and she really didn't like that. Literally the day after Aaron left, we started getting bombarded with phone calls. She tried convincing Nadia first, which Lydia thought was a strategic move because Nadia is the more timid of all of us and, thus, more likely to be persuaded. When Nadia turned her down, she turned her sights on the rest of us. We all got identical phone calls with her trying to persuade us to go visit her, to understand her, to see things from Aaron's perspective. She even brought up the circumstances of Aaron's premature birth and how it was a miracle that she was even here. Josh told her to do better with Lexi. Lydia blocked her number. When the phone calls didn't work, she started turning up at our homes. She continued spewing much of the same shit she had over the phone and before the wedding. She didn't understand what she'd done so wrong, why we were treating her like this. She called me ungrateful and disrespectful. She accused us of harboring unnecessary jealousy towards Aaron and that she loved us all equally. I didn't respond to these comments. I was just trying to prevent her from going inside and saying the same things to Nadia, who was with my partner and son in the living room. Her comments didn't deserve a response, and when she was done I asked her to leave as calmly as I could, but truthfully, I felt a little like crying. But who wouldn't feel shitty with their mom yelling in their face like that, trying to downplay years of pain and calling it unnecessary jealousy. My siblings and I have been let down time and time again by her and our dad ever since Aaron was born. They missed out on so many things over the years, both big and small. But we had one thing. One thing. One thing that they never missed and we were happy with just that one thing and that was our HS graduations, but they couldn't give that to Nadia. All we had were our HS graduations. They missed Josh's college graduation because Aaron broke her leg. It was an accident, I get that, but they never made it up to him. They never celebrated this huge achievement afterwards, and he just had to grin and bear it. Our mom didn't turn up to my partner's babysitter after making such a huge fuss about it because Aaron didn't want to go and wanted them to get their nails done together instead. But our jealousy is unnecessary? Sorry. I don't know how I managed to stay calm when she was yelling at me, but I did. Asking her to leave made her switch tactics though, and she started calling out for my son, trying to coax him to go to her and telling me that she had a right to see her grandson. My partner stepped in then, because she was seething, and took my place at the door. Mom yelled some more but she left when my partner threatened to call the cops. Mom repeated this song and dance with my older siblings but similarly got nowhere with them. Then came the Facebook posts. Indirect rants about ungrateful people and how shocking it is that some kids could turn against their parents so easily. Erin somehow got involved while on her honeymoon and called Lydia to scold her for being mean to our mom. But as I've said before, Lydia is angry and she's had enough. Whatever she said to Erin prevented her from calling the rest of us. There was then a Facebook post about how much it hurt to be kept from a grandchild. Now, there were no names mentioned, but there is only one grandchild and that is my son. My mom's sister called me. There was yelling. I blocked the number. I know dad was trying to convince our mom to just leave us alone. He kept apologizing because she just wasn't listening to him. Aaron came home after two weeks. She tried reaching out to Lydia again, asking for us all to talk because, and this is a quote from Lydia, clearly you, we, all have some issues to work out. We did not turn up. Aaron was very angry at that because she's not used to us turning up for her. July wasn't all bad though. While our mom was on a rampage, our dad was still trying to do better by us. And he's improved a lot. In July, he and I went out for a meal together, just the two of us, and grabbed a drink, and he apologized. It wasn't a generic apology that he could have repeated to all of us, about how he's sorry that he hurt us and neglecting us, but he brought up specific instances that he wanted to apologize for. He thought back on all those years and picked out moments that he wanted to apologize to me for. I know he did the same for the others, but having him apologize for things like cancelling a fishing trip because Aaron needed him was something I wasn't expecting. And I never really cared for fishing, but I wanted to go on that trip because I always saw it on TV, you know? 
I'd always see a dad and son fishing together and I wanted to have that. I wanted dad to prove that I was a priority to him somewhere deep down. It didn't happen, and I never asked again. But we went fishing in July. What started as a trip between the two of us soon grew into a family day out when my siblings expressed an interest in going fishing, too. My brothers first, then Nadia, and even Lydia who hates the smell of fish. Dad brought Lexi and I brought my son, and it was great. It was one of the best days of my life. I suck at fishing, but I'm pretty great at collecting seashells. It was brilliant. Our parents did end up arguing when dad went home. I wasn't there, so I don't know every little detail, but from what dad told me, the argument was mostly because mom didn't understand why we were still in contact with him and not her. She found it insulting that we were repairing our relationship with him. She was angry that dad wasn't pushing us to forgive her, or why he wasn't stopping us from acting out. She was angry that he didn't extend an invitation to her and Aaron for the fishing trip, and she was even angrier when he explained that their presence would make us uncomfortable. Josh turned 29 in the end of July. We booked an escape room for the five of us siblings, then we met our dad and partners for dinner that evening. Josh introduced us to his new partner for the first time. All of our attention was on Josh, the day was completely about him, which was a first for our family. Then there was a party thrown for him by his friends which I came out of with a massive hangover. L. Mom started giving us the silent treatment in the middle of August. Dad moved out in September. While we were getting the silent treatment, Dad was bearing the brunt of her anger and it really took it out of him. He was trying to do better by us and she was trying to villainize us, and he ultimately told her that if she didn't take accountability for her actions soon, then he'd be contacting a lawyer. Mom didn't take him seriously. He's been staying in Lydia's guest room since. Mom doubled down and said that he was blind for not seeing how we were manipulating him. Unlike the rest of us, Dad obviously still has regular contact with Aaron, and according to him, she's even told Mom to reconsider. Unsurprisingly, Aaron's involvement is what got Mom to relent. I'm not sure if she's thinking about how she's treated us, or if she's silently stewing. I know she asked Dad if he's going to move back home but he said that it was better for them to have space right now. Personally, I'm struggling to see an outcome where our mom sincerely admits that she was in the wrong. I think she'll say it just to get Dad back home and the rest of us talking to her again. I don't think she'll ever hold us to the same level as Aaron. In brighter news, there's officially less than a year left until my own wedding. Currently, there is no place for my mom or Aaron. My partner Jade and I are having our fathers wear ties that match me and my groomsmen, something I originally didn't plan to do, but I'm happy with the change. Nadia settled in at college. She's made some new friends with kids in her classes, and she's enjoying. She's happy. Even though we have an active group chat, she FaceTimes me every few days just to talk. Most of what she says I've already read in the GC, but I'm always willing to listen to her stories again. Nadia never used to talk this much. She looks a lot happier now than she did five months ago. I think that's everything. I'm sorry for the novel, but like I said, a lot can happen in five months.